In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come together on this fifth Sunday of Easter, recognizing that the Holy Spirit empowers us to know Jesus and to do his works. So let us prepare ourselves to encounter Jesus in his spirit. Lord Jesus, you were sent by God to bring us eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the only begotten Son of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you dwell within us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected at the daily distribution. So the Twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, it is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at table. Brothers, Select from among you seven reputable men, filled with the Spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. The proposal was accepted to the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenons, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large number of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O oh you just, for praise is fitting for the upright. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp with a ten string. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone, rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 
For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you who have faith, but for those without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make them fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as is their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my Father. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me, has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen. Amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Leaving a place you love is is never easy. In my 15 years of priesthood, I've had to leave three parishes. St. Anthony's in Rockford, Illinois, after my six years of being the associate pastor there after my ordination. Five years at the Basilica of St. Joseph in Milwaukee where I was pastor before coming here. And then coming here to the Diocese of Las Vegas and ministering here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton as as the associate pastor and then administrator. And each one of those times that I had to leave the place where I was, it was really a bittersweet moment. Leaving people that I grew to know and love because I've seen the face of Christ in so many different ways. That's difficult. But it gives an opportunity then to go on to another place and to have even more examples of Christ's love there. And so today, Jesus in the gospel is preparing his disciples for his departure, that he is going to be leaving them in a certain sense. And so he tells them, don't let your hearts be troubled. 
Don't let your hearts be troubled. If you have faith in God and faith in me, things will be okay. And in so intimately, Jesus says that he wants to remain with them and that where I am going to prepare a place for you. Can you imagine hearing that from Jesus? I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. Jesus wants us to be with him. And for each one of us, he says the same thing. Oh, certainly we know that the Lord has prepared a place for us in eternity, and hopefully one day we'll be able to share in that. But even in the day-to-day life, Jesus prepares a place for us in his own heart so that we can become like his heart. And so he wants us to be with him, not just in heaven, but here as well, because Christ never leaves us. And of course, you know, in, in this, uh, you know, uh, the, this uh, dialogue here with the disciples, I mean, it's, it's really almost comical, you know. Thomas, Master, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? You know, Thomas is a very literal type person, so he wants to know, give us the directions, you know, g- do a Google search or a map or whatever and give it to us so we know where to go. And Jesus says, no, 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 I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Whoever comes to me, Will be, will be the one who has that as well. And then Philip, okay? You know, uh, Master, show us the Father, and that'll be enough for us. And Philip, you, I mean, you hear Jesus saying, you know, uh, we would say probably, you know, Jesus would say to Philip, hello, Philip, <laughs> you know, have I been with you so long and you still don't know me? You know, if these early disciples had a difficult time understanding who Jesus was, I guess it's okay for us then too in our faith journey to have some questions. But even when we have those questions and those doubts of faith, to realize though that Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in him. And so, if we believe that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, that he has gone before us to the Father and awaits for us in our eternal dwelling place, but that he's also with us here this very moment, We come to share the Eucharist to be able to know that he's present with us. We will leave this place, but we will not leave without Jesus. He's always with us. So let our hearts not be troubled because we indeed believe he is risen and eternally lives with us. Together we pray the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We turn to our loving God and present our troubles, anxieties, and needs. That all members of the church may faithfully do the works of Jesus, even in the face of trouble and anxiety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders will always guide their people in the ways of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are homeless or who have lost their way in life may find solace in a loving God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may grow in the spirit of Jesus within us who empowers us to do good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you call us to be your holy people and empower us to do the work of your Son. Hear these our prayers that one day we might dwell with you forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and all of this church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Be proclaimed. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Show.
Today, uh, I'm certainly sure you appreciate the celebration of Mass and how much it means to you and means to so many in the community to be the heart of a worshiping community, to give praise to Christ. And so I ask you, uh, in your goodness, to continue your support and generous support of our television ministry here in the Diocese of Las Vegas. May Easter message and Easter hope be in your hearts this day, and may God bless you for your generosity.